Hey everyone, it's Luke Zeme from LukeZeme.com. So today I wanted to teach you a technique to do a mirror reflection of a cityscape on water. This is Sydney cityscape and you can see I've got the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House and then here's the Sydney CBD as well as the Sydney Tower here and these are all the wharfs down on the water. Now what we want to recreate is this really flat mirrored lake type uh, effect and you only get it when there's no wind, no waves, no current and it's usually in the lakes high in the mountains but in a ocean situation like this we have water coming in and everything flowing out boats you're never going to get that perfectly still flat water even if you used a neutral density filter and did long exposures you won't get that crisp sharp look like this so to begin with, I'll just do a little bit of stylization in Lightroom and then we'll come into Photoshop and I'll show you the tutorial. So always starting in Lightroom, I drop my highlights, I increase my shadows and I'll show you a little trick I use here. I hold down the Alt key on the whites and blacks. Now if you hold down Alt and use your slider, you can see the color change here in the main view. Now what you want to do is get it around when the highlights start to come out and that's when the whites start to blow out. You can also do it with your blacks so I'll give you the extreme and you just want to get it around there. Also I just added a little bit of clarity and vibrance. I didn't want to add any vignetting because later on I'm going to crop this image into a bit of a pano type crop because I think the sky lacked a bit of clouds so the image isn't dramatic as it could be. If there were clouds there I may have just left it and done a full mirrored image but we're going to crop it later. So next up we just take it into Photoshop and I'll do that now. So here we are in Photoshop and we're just going to have a look at the final product and what we're trying to achieve. So we want this mirrored reflection of the top half of the image but also important is to keep the ripples from the original photo. This will give it a much more realistic look and you can even see I've let it come through here on the pylon and a bit of the buildings. That just gives it a way more realistic look. So just go back so to begin with we're going to double click this padlock and that will unlock the layout so we just double click and click OK. Let's start up by cropping the image you might want to crop yours but I'm going to do that and I've got a 3 to 1 ratio up here this is kind of a pano crop that I like to use uh, I can do 90 by 30 inch prints etc so we'll just put it around the center here and click enter. Now we want to create three layers down here in the layers panel of this layer. And to do that we just click on the layer and hit command J and command J again. And that will create three layers. Next up just hide the top layer by left clicking on this little eyeball and you're going to left click on the second layer here. We're actually going to flip this upside down this one and this will be used as our mirror layer and we just go to edit transform flip vertical uh, transform here yeah. flip vertical and you can see it's flipped it upside down. Now you just uh, unhide the top layer again and you want to bring down the opacity so we can see through it and then we'll move our second layer about so we can just drop it to around 40%. Make sure you're on the move tool here and you want to click on the second layer here. This is the one we're going to move. Now zoom in and you can use your navigator up here and we're still on, make sure you're on the second layer here and you can use the move tool or you can use the up and down keys. The up and down arrow keys so I'm just using the up and down arrow keys and we want to make it so that they line up perfectly and I'm moving mine up just till it covers up here 
and then that will make sure nothing else is showing and we'll get a maximum reflection and that's all looking good so let's go back out so I use command zero to go to full fit and we're just going to raise the opacity again so let's go to 100 so next up we want to use a mask some people use the marquee tool and create a shape like this uh, invert and cut and paste but if we use masks and gradient tools it allows us to make much more intricate changes to the, the layer so let's go down here just change it to brush we want to deselect so command D create a layer mask on this top layer here this is the one down here the square with the circle in the middle add layer mask next up I'm going to go to gradient tool so this is the one over here underneath the eraser and make sure you're clicked on to this first option here and that's all good so we're just going to zoom in zoom in again just in the navigator and come to the center somewhere here now the gradient works by you left click somewhere and drag it up but we're going to go a very small gradient so we'll just left click somewhere near the horizon and up and you can see that's actually pretty good for a first try it's not bad let me show you the mask and by clicking backslash you can see it's all in red and the mask is cutting through the top layer let me show you the mask the black cuts the, the top layer out and reveals the layer below so I'll just go back to the actual image if you want to make changes to this mask it's really easy so you can do it with a brush and let's just have a look here with the mask on I'll show you if I wanted to just do this for example it will subtract the mask but we don't want to do anything that dramatic all we want to do is just add a little bit more so oops wrong way just left clicking here and you just paint in like this I just want to get rid of this white line make it much smoother you can also, I'll show you a little trick, left click here, hold down shift and that will do a straight line of paint for you. And just go through all the way to the edge. So that, if you want to go through and make changes to your image, that'll be fine. Next up, what we're going to do is bring in the water into this. Now, we're just going to collapse these two, so left click, hold down shift left click on the second layer, control E. Now create another layer mask on the top layer here. So add layer mask, hit this button again. Go over to your gradient tool again. Same settings as before using this first one. Now I'll just reveal the layer below for you. So we see what we had before. This is the water that I want to show in this reflection. Now, we could just use a brush, for example, let's make a large brush, and oh, let's bring down the opacity of that for the example, and paint it through like this, still that's too much, like this, but it's not really combined well, you can see the edge of the brush, and it's just overall not good, so let's just remove that again. The best way is with the gradient tool. Now start outside your image somewhere down here and left click and drag it up. Try to do a straight line, the one from mouse to mouse and around there. That's not a bad start. Looking for something and that's looking good. I'll just zoom in and show you on the pylons for example you can see the ripples has gone through that nicely it all looks quite realistic and I'm liking that actually that's good so we'll just collapse those layers together again and 
you can see we've gone from that original image to this and it's really looking quite realistic. Further stylization, you can use filter programs to finalize out to this. And I also use my luminosity masks and these can be created in there an advanced technique. Um, I can put the link below for people wishing to know more about these. But basically you can select various areas of the image say these blacks for example in the map and that'll give you a lot of detail in the shadows within the city I'll show you my one over here I've actually done that and I'm able to get a lot more detail out of all these buildings whereas originally here you can see it's quite dark and there's not much detail in there I'll recommend two of the software filter programs that I used in this one I actually used McFun and Tensify and this is awesome for creating colors uh, it's got a lot of one-click fix type filters and I also used on one perfect effects 9 and finally I also use resize at the end of my image uh, that's just to get it ready for printing so I'll just put the links for those two software programs below and that's it, thanks guys. If you want to see me use Intensify Pro, I thought I'd just add this on at the end so you see how it works. So let's take this image and into Intensify and I'll show you all the different filters in there. So here we are in Intensify Pro from MacFun and it's for Mac users only and it is fantastic. It's a lot like Nick Color Effects Pro 4 but it's faster and as you can see here in the presets it's got a lot more examples and yeah you can just do a whole lot more and quicker so example like this universal enhancement and each preset you can adjust using a slider to a bit like an opacity and you can also then take each preset and make all these adjustments to each one another great thing is you just go to layers, add another layer, and you can layer presets on top of each other. Just drop the opacity of each layer, make adjustments to each one. You can see up here. And I've got all my favorites highlighted here, and they're all in the landscapes and in the tune ones. But there's details, creative ones, black and white, even for architecture as well. So, I mean, it's so fast, so quick, and it's really worth having a look, guys. There's one final part I wanted to tell you guys about, and that is you can do this little blur on the bottom section here. Sometimes people find that doing a mirrored reflection straight up like this is too sharp. So we can use Photoshop to just blur the bottom half here. So I'll just duplicate the layer, so Command-J and just come straight up to filter blur and then go down to motion blur and we want him to make it quite small just so we've got that little blur on it not too much and this will just give it that more realistic look so let's just go around 15 and we only want it to show on the bottom not the top so we're just going to do another layer mask so we just go command r for me for layer mask or click down here as i showed you before and then we're going to use the gradient tool and same as before just kind of make a straight line and um, let's have a look at that mask yep so that's just over there like that and that's your final touch for the image. Thanks a lot. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers, guys.